So our next presenter is Dr. Beatrice Garcia. Um, Beatrice has a PhD from the Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva, Switzerland, um, and is now at our School of Law. Her presentation this afternoon is entitled Environmental Law and Climate Change, Re uh, Research Impact and Our Common Future. Thank you. Thank you. I come from a country that has the largest forest in the world. The country is Brazil and the forest is the Amazon. After graduating from law school, this is what I realized. I have no passion for civil procedure or taxation law, but I have one passion. I realized that the law can be used as a tool to help us to protect forests, animals, rivers, and our well-being. I left Brazil to do a master's and PhD in Europe in environmental law. I wrote me, my PhD about the Amazon. My thesis was published as a book by Cambridge University Press. My book still stands as the only account of international law and the protection of the Amazon. In Europe, I worked at the United Nations for the Biotrade Initiative, helping communities in South America and Asia to commercialize products and services from biodiversity including, for example, nuts, flowers, medicinal plants, and services such as ecotourism. I then moved to Australia and had a chance to work for a small company called Forest Alive that achieved big things. We developed carbon projects for farmers in Tasmania that wanted to protect farmers, uh, forests within their farms. These projects generated carbon credits that were commercialized and sold for companies such as Qantas, hotels, universities, and individuals. The money coming from the selling of carbon credits would pay the farmers to keep their forests instead of logging them. With this work, we helped protect 38,000 hectares of native forests and save the habitat of endangered species such as the Tasmanian devil. While working at Forest Alive, I wrote an e-learning course for the United Nations with a colleague proposing a methodology on how to develop projects that preserve forests and at the same time ensure the sustainable use of natural resources. This course was presented at the UN in Geneva and used as a training tool for several stakeholders in Latin America. We had great feedback with a 96% high satisfaction rate. And as a result, the UN signed an agreement with Forest Alive to develop similar training tools for countries in the Asia Pacific. Our e-learning course was also presented at the Australian Award Fellowship Program in 2015 organized by Griffith University with the support of the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. I have recently joined Western Sydney University in 2017, and last year I secured a competitive research grant from UNESCO with Professor Donna Craig uh, to develop a comparative study on biosphere reserves in the Asia Pacific region. Biosphere reserves are areas uh, of forests or other types of vegetation set aside for protection. What we had to do was to advise countries on how to make their laws more effective. We made several recommendations in a report submitted just two months ago, and they will hopefully help countries to make positive changes, either to change their existing laws or to create new laws. I wrote three recent opinion articles uh, publishing, published in The Conversation, which is a platform where academic work is disseminated for larger non-academic audiences. One of them was about a decision by the Brazilian government 
to, um, in 2017 to open the Amazon to mining. After these publications, I uh, was approached by Al Jazeera and gave various radio interviews in Australia. In terms of future impact, I'm now developing a project with colleagues at the Law School uh, for an environmental education project called Green Genius. We had this idea after talking to teachers that came to our university in our legal study day in 2017. This is a day when students and teachers visit our university to discuss about their school curriculum. Teachers from across Western Sydney told us that they were not teaching complex and current environmental issues because they do not have the resources or knowledge to do so. These pressing issues include climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. With the Green Genius Project, we want to provide the resources and knowledge that teachers in Western Sydney need to teach about the environment. The aim is to foster creativity, policy innovation, and scientific innovation among young people in the region in order to address local and global environmental issues. After all this time, I still believe that the law is a tool to help us protect our environment and our well-being. And this is what my research is about. Thank you. A question for Beatrice. So much to ask. Imogen. And then one from the audience, please. What a wonderful program. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, are you continuing to work with the teachers that approached you? Um, do you have an ongoing dialogue with them in, yes. your, in the development of the Green Genius Program? Yes, so we are at, sta at this stage where we're trying to raise funding for, for, the, pro for the project. So this company that uh, for Forest Alive we worked for, they are willing to fund part of the, of the um, uh, project. So we are uh, now in a process of also selecting the schools. It will be one or two schools, just we, we shall start small and then probably grow a little bigger. But uh, yeah, so we, we now need another partner probably because they are, they are very interesting funding, but they would, would like to, to do it with another industry partner. So yes, so that's where we are at at the moment. So uh, in, the, in the fundraising stage, but uh, and then the schools are, are, are more or less uh, identified already. And then we'll start that uh, conversation uh, a little more with the schools once we have that initial ground funding um, available. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Beatrice, fantastic project, in incredibly you. inspiring. Um, well, I, I, my question is one about, I suppose, how do you find that, how have you dealt with the tension between a oppressive commercialization with yeah. knowledge systems that are often seen as being owned in common? Um, do, have you come across that tension and how have you dealt with it? Um, in, in the commercialization of. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, in the commercialization, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Look, um, it is a, it's a bit of a, a dilemma, I guess, because when we were um, working, when I was working for Forest Alive, uh, we would see these big companies buying our credits. For example, Qantas was making a lot of publicity around uh, the credits that they were buying. Uh, it was not, you know, um, in other uh, industries as well. So, um, and then the question is, is it really helping? Is it really helping reduce carbon emissions, right? I think in an ideal world, would have everybody just reducing carbon emissions from the uh, different sectors, right? But uh, what I could see from my experience is that, is that these projects were being very, very um, uh, helpful in really protect those forests that otherwise wouldn't be there, you see? So um, yes, I can see from my experience, I guess, that there is a, that there is a, a value in this commercialization, if you wish, of uh, you know, environmental uh, services and uh, products. Yes. Thank you. Please Thank join you me much. in thanking Beatrice.